Welcome to the official residence of the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Right Honorable Dr. Saulos Klaus Chirima. We are here in Nililongwe, in Area 12. That's where the Vice President stays. Zodia Broadcasting Station is here to have a very special conversation with the Vice President. would like to know a few things from him. You remember uh, a few weeks ago he had promised the nation that he, he will come back with new information. So we are here, we really don't know what he has uh, or what he will share with us, but we are here to find out whether that time is here now for him to share the new stuff about his life and of course, his political life. My name is Gospel Kazako, stay tuned in. Mr. Vice President, thank you very much for allowing us to come to your residence and then have a chat talking to you. Most welcome. We'd like to hear a few things uh, from you mm -hmm. because we know that uh, 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 in June, that was specifically on 6th June, you had told the nation that uh, there will be new information but you'll also be able to update. So we're not very sure whether our coming now mm -hmm will be able to get uh, the latest and uh, probably uh, what you promised. Uh, but once again, thank you very much. Right. Most um, Mr. Vice President, uh, from 6th June to date, tell us what has been the situation like. Um, thank you. Since that... Uh uh, media briefing mm -hmm. uh, because I had to clarify and respond to a couple of issues. I, I am convinced I addressed uh, what needed to be addressed at that point. I made two promises. Uh, first was that I was going to leave the DBP which uh, in effect, I have left. There is a formal communication that must. You go. have you have submitted your. I haven't. Later. I haven't. Uh, I will do that in the course of next week. Mm -hmm. And um, the next thing that I also promised was that uh, I will be sharing with the people of the nation what my next uh, move will be. Um, so in between then and today, um, consultations continue in terms of what to do next. There is growing calls and, um, from different uh, stakeholder groups to participate in the 2019 general election to compete uh, for the highest office in the land, which means uh, to be a presidential candidate. And uh, including uh, those uh, people that are uh, uh, members of the so-called Chilima group. And why, why do you, before you continue, Mr. Vice President, why do you call it the so-called Chirima group? Okay, uh, it's, it's so-called because that's what they call it. Um, and um, uh, people have got the liberty to christen uh, either movements or uh, organizations um, the way they like. Uh, it is not what I would call it if uh, I wanted to because it really mustn't bear an individual's name. Uh, that's the disease we are suffering from today because the, the political organizations we see uh, post uh, one party rule, the majority of them are uh, either individual or family uh, linked. 
and therefore we should try and avoid a similar situation going forward. Obviously, where I'm going to be involved, I wouldn't want anything to be uh, linked to me or my family. Uh, it must be something that is owned uh, by uh, a lot of people. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> that is very much in, in sync with what I said on the day when people were asking for uh, uh, whether one would want to uh, be a leader. And I said, uh, which I repeat today, uh, we should be addressing this uh, in the manner that first the, let, let's understand what country do we desire. So we must have a vision. Number two is how do we get there, which is the strategy. And perhaps the question of leadership uh, should feature as the third or fourth point to say once you have your vision and, and you understand how you must get there, perhaps then you should be discussing who uh, takes us to that uh, uh, ideal state. So that's why I, I, I refer it uh, to, uh, to that. But uh, anyway, um, that plus other uh, uh, political organizations, we you know, have approached me to say, look, why don't we uh, work together? Um, and we're very close at this stage uh, to taking a position. Because what's remaining really is uh, uh, two things. Number one is to uh, press the button and say, go or no go. Uh, the second, obviously, is to look at the how. Are we going to go, if we go forward, are we going to go as um, an independent candidate or are we going to go as uh, a candidate for a political grouping, be it a political party or a coalition, uh, as was the case back in 2004, there was the Nguyen Zano coalition, uh, in which case individual political organizations uh, would then support uh, one presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. So this decision uh, is about to be made and we're going to make it within the next maximum 10 days. Uh, last time during your press briefing you had mentioned that it's either uh, there's going to be some kind of support, uh, you're going to support either a political grouping, of course it has to be a political grouping sure. because we're talking of an election, Yeah. or uh, you might consider otherwise. Uh, we take it that the otherwise was that uh, you might want to stand uh, you know, as a presidential candidate. Which way do you think, without necessarily um, uh, committing very much, but I'm saying which way would you take? Are you for supporting a political grouping or you would want to stand as a presidential candidate? Actually, um, I prefer uh, to support a group, uh, people who uh, have got or who we share similar ideologies or values. Uh, from which group then the question of leadership would be decided? I don't think that it's right uh, that uh, I should go out there and impose myself uh, on people uh, that because so and so thinks that I can be president or another person thinks like this, then I should. Uh, start walking. But normally, when you're we, when you're contesting for presidency, uh, you know there has to be uh, some kind of uh, nomination, some kind of support. Someone has to think that you can be president. Well, no, absolutely. Now, assuming that someone thinks yeah, you can be president and he is, you are not imposing yourself on them, um, would you take that? Would you would you stand as a presidential candidate? Come to if if the process is. Uh, that um, we go through an elective uh, conference or a, a, a convention where uh, candidates would compete and uh, one would emerge uh, as, a, as a victor and uh, you become the torchbearer, of course, uh, that I, I would uh, gladly accept. It's a very humbling uh, uh, moment, you know, when uh, somebody thinks that uh, you could hold the highest uh, office of the land. Mm. But at the same time, uh, we must understand that uh, one of the problems that we have in this country is this politics of uh, glorification. We glorify our leaders, and uh, when they become monsters and they start biting us, uh, we start complaining. Uh, this starts exactly the same way, to say that we think so-and-so mm. uh, is the only one that can be uh, or can be president and uh, when other people uh, want to express interest uh, we think uh, that uh, 
uh, you know, there is there is nothing treasonous about uh, uh, one expressing uh, interest to to run for the highest office. I mean, it's it's uh, a constitutional provision, 35 years uh, of age and above. If you have got no criminal uh, record, obviously you you are free to uh, to contest. contest. Yeah. So. I, I wanted to approach it in a manner that uh, there must be the due process, uh, and if one were to emerge a victor, uh, then obviously you you, you proceed with uh, 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 the campaign uh, to go for the highest office. Maybe let me put it this way: um, assuming the whole process is uh, very fluent, uh, very proper, um, something that you agree. Um, say an elective convention or any other meeting or any other conference, uh, those have been done, and you've been asked to stand as a presidential candidate. Will you take it? I would say yes. Could we say that you're ready to stand as a presidential candidate in 2019? I'm ready, but I will put if there, if and only if we follow. Uh, a process that is acceptable. Yeah, so I said we, 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 we are saying that to uh, me let, and, let, yeah. and others. So you are ready. I am. If what you are saying is you are ready to stand as a presidential candidate in twenty nineteen. Sure, I am. Okay, as long as uh, the process is uh, is proper, is perfect, transparent, transparent, democratic. Uh -huh. uh, I'll i present myself. Which grouping will this be? Will it be the Chirima movement? You, you put it so-called, no, but Chirima movement, or maybe you might uh, start considering other groupings? I actually call it, uh, I prefer to call it, uh, to call it the transformation movement, mm -hmm. um, because that's what uh, we must look forward to uh, in uh, 2019, transformational leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, because those that are advancing uh, for transformation, advocating for transformational leadership, some of them would be in that grouping. There are many others that would be in other political organizations. Uh, this is why I say it, if this is going to be a movement, uh, it must be a movement that belongs to people. Uh, you, you don't want something that, uh, you know, if, if, if I dropped dead tomorrow, then the organization crumbles. We want something that is going to stand the test of time. It must be uh, owned by a very big number of people because they subscribe to the future, mm -hmm. to a great future uh, for this country. And therefore, the genesis of it, yes, will be the transformation movement. Uh, and I have spoken to so many uh, other uh, political organizations. Uh, I may not uh, be at liberty to disclose at this point, but suffice it to say that uh, there is growing consensus that uh, we need uh, to try a new type of leadership, which is uh, transformational. Um, everybody can say we are visionary, but uh, that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Uh, and therefore, we need um, uh, to you know, identify uh, first a set of, maybe a set is not the right word, but a number of political organizations uh, that subscribe to transform the transformational leadership agenda. Mm -hmm. And then you could come together. Now, how you come together uh, is also uh, in a number of ways. There could be a number of permutations. One is uh, what I said, an electoral alliance, a grand coalition. So. Uh, back in 2004, Ngulizano coalition, that's one option. The other is where, and I've heard this before, and I think it would be uh, a great uh, uh, thing if it happened, that uh, the amalgamation of uh, what, what are looked at as small political parties coming together, you dissolve the rest, you have one, and everybody rallies behind that one organization. It does uh, remove uh, the, perce the perceived uh, greed that uh, we worry about, but it also demonstrates um, uh, unity uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the commonness of, uh, 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 oh, sorry, the unity of, of our purpose, which is to see a transformed uh, country uh, in the future for the next generations uh, and many more to come.
Mr. Vice President, anything can happen in politics. Um, look, today you are contemplating of standing as a presidential candidate in 2019. Actually, you are saying you are going to stand in 2019 should there be a due process. Um, if the DPP, the Democratic Progressive Party, came back to you and said, well, yeah, we, we didn't agree, uh, can we work together? How would you take that? Uh, working together in what way? In two ways. I might say, no, we still want the transformation uh, movement uh, to be part of our bigger movement. Or they might actually come back and say, yeah, I think we think that you can be our presidential candidate, as was suggested by others in the <laughs> party. How would you take that? Um, that would be very interesting. I, uh, <laughs> Well, first and foremost, I don't see that happening, but uh, uh, you... Why don't you, you see that you, happening? You mustn't... Uh, Why don't you see that happen? Anything can happen. Well, I, um, I know the uh, thinking uh, inside the organization. I would be the last person that they would want to see as a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, I may not disagree Should the thinking too change? Much. Should the thinking change? Um, and um, if it did, uh, the... Um, the, the point would be, uh, are we able to convert uh, to uh, this uh, new thinking of uh, uh, transformational leadership? Because people, the question they ask is, what, what is transformation? And, and, and I always say that perhaps the first thing that we need to start transforming, transforming is actually uh, our type of politics. I have said, uh, I think, uh, many a time, uh, there is politics of glorification here. We have uh, created a slave-master relationship. The leadership are the masters. Uh, the citizens are perhaps, uh, you know, uh, relegated to uh, slaves. Um, it it uh, oftentimes reminds me of uh, Lazarus in the Bible. I mean, who sat, uh, you know, next to the king's table and uh, was uh, uh, wishing for uh, crumbs. Uh, we, we should never create um, or allow a situation like that to be created and we need to begin to move away from that. It has happened uh, for many years. Uh, our women have been, uh, you know, subjected to, uh, to that, I mean, to, to be dancing for the leadership. Uh, the youth, we have seen uh, how they have been used uh, either as, uh, you know, uh, people that are going to uh, uh, chant pro leadership or regime uh, songs or they are also going to be used to intimidate other people that's really not what we should be doing i think we need to do much better we need to see for instance uh, when we look at our women first is a 50 50 campaign uh, we must leave that campaign i mean it's not just by word of mouth but in practice it, it must it must be reflected in in what we do um, we must have a deliberate uh, uh, policy, for instance, to create uh, a number of women uh, millionaires. So you could also segment uh, that to say that, look, uh, upper class, middle class, and, uh, uh, and you try to upscale everybody so that uh, you create uh, a lot more independent uh, women, not independent in terms of standing alone, but financially, so that uh, some of the concerns we have today, gender-based violence and so on and so forth, could begin to be addressed. So, we, if that were to happen, that we're beginning to see this within the organization, mm -hmm. perhaps we could mm -hmm. uh, get into a discussion. Mm -hmm. But uh, personally, uh, I am not convinced that uh, such, such an offer would, would ever come. I was talking to a few uh, supporters of the United Democratic Front, and uh, some were saying, yeah, yeah, we can also see if we can get new partners. And certainly, you should be one of the partners. Um, and especially now that uh, it's very clear that you're going to stand as presidential candidate in 2019. How would you take it if uh, the UDF offered you to be the presidential candidate and then finds someone else to be the running mate, for example? Or no matter where who becomes the running mate, how would you take it? Again, um, That's another scenario. That, that look, there could be a number of permutations, and uh, you have zeroed in on, on the DPP, uh, you have zeroed in on the UDF, and uh, um, 
we could uh, explore uh, how best uh, a partnership could be structured. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it presents a unique uh, combination. Um, uh, obviously, one is, is what uh, uh, is, is the, you know, the heat of the moment, is uh, uh, the youth quake. You know, people want uh, youthful leadership. But perhaps I think it's not just about age. I think it's um, uh, uh, the youth that is uh, a progressive, uh, uh, productive. You have got a proven track record of, of uh, delivering on uh, uh, assignments that have been given. So it does present... Uh, a very unique uh, opportunity, a combination of uh, two uh, vibrant uh, uh, young men, um, and uh, uh, we could see whether we, you know, uh, could package, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a, a partnership mm -hmm. and. Uh, but there could be that possibility. That the, possibility. I mean, it's, it, it's a give and take. Mm -hmm. You have to get into a, a discussion mm -hmm. and uh, say, look, these are expectations. I think it's always important from day one uh, to be very clear with one another what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, if you don't, then obviously uh, that's a recipe for uh, disaster mm -hmm. uh, as you progress, as you work together. Mm -hmm. Because uh, certain things have been hidden. Uh, it's best to lay the cards on the table. I know that perhaps that's... Uh, uh, being overly ambitious in, in politics, it may not be that straightforward, but it's, it's, if we are looking for a new approach, if we are looking for new politics, uh, perhaps we need to start uh, advance, advancing a business-like uh, approach uh, to conducting uh, our affairs. So it's something that can be done, and, and I think, in my view, it's a very uh, unique uh, opportunity. Um, uh, with God's grace, uh, supposing we had another 30 years to live, uh, you could, you know, do one does two five-year terms and another one do another for 20 years. You could perhaps uh, run some uh, very uh, high-impacting programs and uh, see them to fruition uh, over a period of 20 years. So it's, it's something that uh, uh, can be looked at. You have spoken about corruption. Actually, you are against corruption. Um, and uh, you have, at certain times, condemned corruption, actually, in government. You have stood in public, spoke against corruption clearly. But you, you are the vice president, and you are part of the DPP government. Uh, is there something that you did to ensure that the corruption that you talk about was kind of mitigated? Right. First, this whole uh, corruption discourse is um, uh, is a national dialogue. I think all of us, there is very few people who disagree that there is corruption. There could be corruption all over. Uh, by the way, this is a corruption in the UK because corruption is an English word, so it must exist uh, uh, there. And um, we, including the president, has on a number of occasions said, yes, there is corruption. Corruption in government, in the private sector. Uh, he even wanted to say it could exist in the uh, religious organizations. I mean, there are human beings there. And the reason we uh, highlight it is, as they say, the first step to healing is acceptance. So we must accept the fact that we have a problem. Uh, if you are feeling feverish, you go to the doctor because you say, I could be sick. And then you go to the lab and they, you, you get uh, into a discussion with the doctor. Uh, after that, uh, you're given some uh, treatment. It's the same. We have identified this to be a problem and we are saying all of us must join hands in the fight. We cannot ignore the fact that it exists. We also cannot pretend that it doesn't exist. It does exist. And um, there are things that we have done uh, as individuals, either sitting in my office, including the president himself. There are certain things that we would have done to actually deliberately stop 
certain things from proceeding because they smacked over uh, irregularities. Uh, and, and remember what I said uh, on the 6th of June, uh, I'm under oath, there are certain things that I can't disclose. For instance, a discussion between me and the head of state. Uh, uh, I'll be very uh, childish mm. uh, and unprofessional. Yes, so you wouldn't uh, diverge much to, more. To, to, to begin yeah. to diverge. But yeah. the, the, the point being that uh, I think what's important in here is that we must admit that it exists, number one. Number two, then we shouldn't be defeated. We should be saying what measures do we want to put in place and the best way in my view is let's continue exposing whatever we think are flaws uh, so that the people that will come up with uh, uh, final so the law is very clear for instance uh, on how to deal with it but um, if I'm sitting here, we're sitting here right now, if somebody is having a discussion on how to defraud a government, you don't know. This is why now you must have a, a, a joint effort by a number of people, different stakeholders, in order for us to deal with this. But we'll continue uh, to speak against it mm -hmm. because it's bad. I mean, there's money uh, that is ending up in uh, a few people's pockets. We see people that had nothing. I mean, I can say this for a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, even just uh, uh, four years ago, uh, when we're getting into government, they had nothing. Today they are uh, uh, super rich. Where did that money come from? They have no business to show for it. Uh, and uh, we must uh, condemn it because uh, uh, I don't see why we should be uh, clapping hands uh, for uh, people that are corrupt. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that is that tends to be the case. We, we dine and uh, wine with them when we should actually be admonishing uh, their behavior. Whoever condemns something must come on the table with clean hands. How clean are you? I don't know. I How don't far know. are you from corruption? Um, Would you say you have never been involved in corrupt uh, <laughs> acts or something? Um, no. Um, I am very sure that uh, you see, because the, there is there is two things. One is truth, and the other is evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I am very sure that I have not been involved in corruption. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that uh, uh, there have been references to uh, a case where, and, and maybe this uh, I shouldn't be diverging here, but uh, uh, you know, I sold a house to uh, somebody who purportedly was. Uh, um, a suspect. And, uh, I mean, you saw the house to a suspect of corruption. Well, at that point, I don't know whether they were suspect yet, or but mm -hmm. eventually it turned out that uh, you know they were suspected of uh, 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 cash care transactions. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are, uh, uh, you know, the sale was a sale that was conducted through uh, uh, an estate agent, uh, and uh, you know we we went and. Uh, we presented our side of the story uh, to the Anti-Corruption Bureau uh, and cleared to have just been uh, a bona fide seller, uh, mm -hmm. just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, I really uh, don't uh, recall anything else. We cannot uh, take away your religious affiliation in your political life. And uh, I would like to know how involved is the Catholic Church in your aspirations? Uh, can we formally say that they are supporting your cause? <laughs> you've, you've used the Catholic platform uh, quite often and uh, being a Catholic, not just a Catholic, at least I know you are a devout Catholic. Actually, I've known you as a Catholic, I think more of a Catholic than a Vice President, in my, in my view. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think a few years that I've known you as Vice President, but many, many years as a devout, devout and admirable yeah. Catholic. Uh, matters of faith are, um, in my view, uh, personal. Uh, and sometimes we also tend to misunderstand or misrepresent or misconstrue them. Uh, I've not been Catholic uh, uh, because I'm vice president No, I've been there uh, for many years. And um, I go to 
St. Patrick's Parish here because that's where I think uh, I profess my faith the best. Um, the Catholic Church does encourage its faithful to participate in politics, but they will never uh, rally behind a particular individual. Um, they will guide the later on qualities of a good leader, and the later and others would either follow or not follow. There's nobody who is uh, 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 taught to vote for a particular individual at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. I have um, been to different uh, functions with a different political, uh, sorry, different uh, religious organizations. Um, and I've also spoken the way I do. Uh, in the recent past, uh, perhaps uh, because of the environment we're in, uh, there has been, uh, in, my, in my view, a misunderstanding and misinterpretation of what has been said. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, perceived to be abuse uh, of the uh, religious pulpit. To communicate a message, but see, when you go to a function as a guest of honor, you are perhaps asked to say one or two things, and most of the times we encourage the key messages that we share in, in our church is financial independence, financial sustainability, of course, the fact that we must grow our faith, and if there is other additional information uh, that must be shared, uh, where churches, for instance, are building uh, a hall or a church or a house for a priest, we always encourage them because they're fundraising. Yeah. We encourage them to exercise financial prudence, obviously not to be involved in uh, any uh, malpractices, uh, any financial mismanagement. Uh, and therefore you have to refer uh, to real life examples. Um, this has been misconstrued to, to mean that uh, I'm standing, I've never gone to uh, the Catholic Church, to any Catholic Church, or indeed to any church for that matter, to campaign. Mm -hmm. You go there to pray, um, and uh, if you're given a chance to speak, then obviously you share your thoughts. I don't believe that um, one needs to be <laughs> uh, hoping from one church to the next. Uh, because they are a president or a vice president or an MP uh, in a particular area. Uh, faith is faith. It's not like food, that uh, you must have a, a balanced diet. Uh, faith uh, is faith. You profess your faith the best way uh, it must be professed. So uh, I think we must uh, begin to move away from wanting faith to be professed uh, in the way we look at food as a balanced diet, but mm -hmm. you must have carbohydrates, uh, vegetables, protein, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. uh, faith is faith. You must go and profess your faith in the best way that it must be professed. And hoping from one religious uh, church to the next or religious organization to the next it could actually be annoying uh, to other people. Uh, they may not uh, really want to be disturbed. So unless you are invited, uh, stay put mm -hmm. and continue professing your faith the best way it must be professed. This is a special conversation with a Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Right Honorable Dr. Salos Klaus Chirima. We are in Area 12 at his official residence. We are having a chat with him uh, just to know the latest information and some, some updates uh, surrounding his political life. Stay tuned in because we'll be getting to another side of the, of the program. Welcome back to this special conversation with uh, the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Right Honorable Dr. Saulos Klaus Chirima. We are at his official residence in Area 12 in Lilongwe. Welcome back, Mr. Vice President. Thank you. Um, what would you say government has failed to do? 
one or two things that you would say this is failure. Right. Now talking about failure, what would you also say that apart from that fa- failure, or much as they have failed, but probably this they have done better? Mm-hmm. Right. Let me <clears throat> uh, first of all say that um, uh, if if I look at the uh, regime today, um, I am very certain that uh, the um, uh, community colleges program is very good and um, it needed to be complemented fully. Uh, What I mean is that uh, yes, let's train the youth, Uh, we need to equip them afterwards, not just uh, to go into uh, employment but perhaps to also stand alone. So that needed to have a financial institution that was ready uh, to provide resources uh, so that these people, you know, like a revolving fund, um, just like there is the uh, higher education loans board, uh, something similar, mm-hmm. so that uh, we, we complemented uh, or we complete the cycle. So that's, um, you know, a thumbs up. You, you, you can give it there. Uh, and also the spirit of the uh, decent uh, housing program. Uh, is good. It, it needed to be encouraged uh, uh, because uh, we need people to have decent houses. I mean, it's a fact. There is no mm. uh, question about that. And um, you know, the efforts as well to you know turn around uh, the state of the economy uh, have been good. They could have done much more, but uh, you know, it it must uh, 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 be commended for that. Um, since we were just highlighting a few, uh, let me say that uh, for me what makes my heart bleed is uh, the reforms. Um, because that was a flagship program and perhaps it was going to be uh, a legacy uh, of His Excellency Professor Arthur Pidam Tarek. I, I know it's continuing, but I think uh, uh, we have uh, gone into a, a much slower uh, pace mode or pace, uh, which means that, uh, you know, some of the quick gains we could actually be backsliding. Uh, it needs to be uh, looked at because uh, we, we can't visibly see uh, what is happening. So for me there, uh, because it was stated uh, as one of the uh, flagship uh, programs, uh, it has slowed down. Second is uh, the harmonization of uh, remuneration. Uh, started very well in uh, 2014. Uh, if you recall, uh, there was an unprecedented increase in salaries. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people got 70 percent, 80 percent. I mean, uh, it was uh, remarkable, and uh, it needed now to be complemented uh, with uh, uh, supporting uh, interventions, either incentive schemes, uh, because you really can't be or performance management uh, or performance-related uh, uh, increments, uh, so that the performance culture. Uh, was reintroduced uh, in the civil service. Uh, we needed to re-energize uh, the civil service so that people look forward to going back to work the following day. Um, so for me there, we, we really haven't done that well. And, and uh, I think perhaps the other thing is um, uh, two evils. Uh, one is the corruption. I think we haven't uh, uh, done that well, uh, whether we we can have a discussion mm. uh, for uh, for days on end, but the fact is uh, we, we needed to do failure. much more mm. uh, for reasons I've said. I mean, how, how do people explain their worth? Uh, okay. uh, you see, if you say, well, I'm in business uh, and I've made this money uh, from my businesses, I hope they pay tax because uh, good business people also pay tax. So if, if uh, that money, you know, they have done businesses and the money goes into the banks, uh, obviously MRA must also, uh, the taxman must also be smiling because uh, the business people are thriving. Uh, everybody must be uh, thriving uh, in the chain. And uh, the other way, which I think has been done very, very badly, is the nepotism. Uh, we really can't have people just being uh, appointed and promoted into positions because uh, they belong. No, there is nowhere uh, it is written uh, in the constitution of Malawi that uh, uh, 
because Mr. Kazako, you know, comes from whether it is in Sanje or uh, Lilongwe, then everybody at Zodiac must be from there. I mean, that's not the way it works. So that has not been done well at all, and uh, it must be condemned uh, because it's bad. Uh, we need to uh, give people equal opportunity. Uh, this body body, as we said in our uh, 11th February 2015 report that we submitted at the BICC, we said this is one of the things that is creating uh, problems for us uh, in this country. The homeboy syndrome. Uh, you are from uh, my home village. I really cannot uh, uh, speak against uh, whatever is going on because uh, we come from the same village or from the same traditional authority. That. Uh, must be uh, condemned. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been done well at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. After 6th June, when you came out with that press briefing, what has been your relationship with the state president, Professor Arthur Bidom Tariq? Unfortunately, I don't uh, discuss that mm -hmm. <laughs> in public. Okay. Um, so, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, let me remain mute. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. And you are not seen uh, uh, publicly, you are not attending uh, government public events well i think i have missed as uh, vice president you know, i i have missed three functions mm -hmm. um uh, i think the ones i have missed uh, but somewhere in blanta uh, one was here mm -hmm. uh the the blanta one i had missed because i traveled to, to, to i mean the long one i had missed because i traveled to blanta so i didn't come back here on time mm -hmm. Uh, and I do communicate when I'm not uh, attending functions. I just don't disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm professional. But this enough. time the, fre the frequency, the frequency has been. Uh, no, it's just because there are three. There so are three. Back to back. There are three functions back to back, mm -hmm. and also because the environment is one that creates suspicion, mm -hmm. and therefore people say, "Well, oh, maybe one plus one equals four. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, I have also missed uh, uh, some functions. Mm -hmm. Uh, either because they were uh, out of the long way and had other things to do here or had been delegated to do something different. Mm -hmm. So I think at this stage, let's not read too much into it um, unless if there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Now, if there was a problem, rest assured uh, that uh, I would say, uh, I don't speak in pseudonyms, I speak very directly. Mm -hmm. So if there was any issues uh, that people needed to know, or even like you're asking me now, mm -hmm. uh, if there was a reason why I wasn't attending a function, I would say, I, I'm not going to wait and should should we expect to see you at uh, government events you expect to see me mm -hmm. all right uh, and by the way there is um, <laughs> there is uh, two um, things to this uh, one there is functions where you are invited and the other functions where you're not invited so if I'm invited uh, if uh, I am not uh, preoccupied I didn't mm -hmm. have a prior engagement obviously you see me there but uh, if I'm not uh, I'm not welcome, I'm not sure. You're part of cabinet, are you attending cabinet meetings? Yes, I am. For as far as I know, mm -hmm. cabinet meetings mm -hmm. uh, I've attended. I've not missed, uh, I've only missed one uh, cabinet meeting back in 2014 because I'd gone to a funeral uh, to represent the president. This was uh, the paramount chief mm -hmm. uh, in Palombe. Mm -hmm. That is the only one that I remember missing. I could have said, wh when you attend uh, these cabinet meetings, what is the uh, well, atmosphere you, like, you, but you said how not to say it. <laughs> thank you yeah. for your understanding. <laughs> yeah, but, but I guess, I guess um, sure. it's friendly, friendly atmosphere. Well, I mean, uh, that's what I'm saying, but uh, you can keep guessing, but uh, mm -hmm. that answer won't come from me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, now, as we are uh, winding or coming to the age of our conversation, I would want us to uh, put in a bag one or two or three things. But the main one is your standing as presidential candidate in 2019. Yes, I've given the preconditions already, so the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. You have that willingness. Yes, you, you have that desire. Well, I have to accept the call. Mm -hmm. uh, if the call comes in, you're ready to stand as presidential candidate. I'll be available. Mr. Vice President, as we are getting to the age of our special conversation, do you have something to, to say to the people of Malawi? Right. Uh, thank you for your uh, offer uh, to say something um, of my own, perhaps. Uh, first is to say that um, um, success is a choice. And, uh, you know, 
I would like to encourage uh, as many Malawians as possible uh, to subscribe to this, that uh, we must be a successful people, a successful nation. We need to reshape our destiny. Right now, uh, voter registration is going on. I encourage all people of a voting age to go and register. Because we need to have the, I'll use, I'll use the term in courts, court and court, the equipment uh, to enable us to vote. Uh, if at the last minute one decided not to vote, it mustn't be because they didn't have uh, the voting rights, but uh, perhaps because they have changed their mind for whatever reason. And the people would be saying, but uh, we are not uh, impressed with the, the candidates that we're seeing today. They must have faith. When God uh, tempted Abraham, when you read uh, in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 19, uh, he wanted Abraham to sacrifice his own son. Uh, that was temptation, but Abraham, in my view, uh, could have some faith. You know, he must have had some faith that uh, the God that I worship really would not do this. And uh, he, he went on. And you, you saw what happened when uh, they got to... Uh, the place where they're going to make the offering, the bent offering. Uh, so the angel came and said, uh, don't kill the young man. Uh, behold, there is a lamb you can, you know, you can use instead. Um, and therefore, I want to say the same. But look, let's have faith. Uh, God will provide uh, the kind of leader that you want uh, for 2019. But it's best that you must be equipped. You must be ready uh, with your voting card uh, to enable yourself to vote. And, and finally is to say... There is this uh, uh, call for uh, youthful leadership and so on. It's good to be uh, youthful. Uh, perhaps we need to uh, add some caveats to it, uh, a progressive uh, and uh, you know, with a proven record. I was looking at, uh, in a brief, the history of this country. And um, uh, way back from 1964, uh, and uh, you know the, the leadership at the time, even including Dr. Banda himself, uh, was uh, either 58 or 60 years old. Uh, and around him were the likes of uh, uh, the late uh, Honorable Aleke Banda, may he so rest in peace, and Masako uh, Chibembere, may he so rest in peace, uh, and others. They were in the 20s or in the 30s. Uh, and progressively, uh, people occupied cabinet positions or influential positions uh, at a very tender age. Uh, the former president, uh, His Excellency Dr. Bagir Mouzi, I think in 1994, uh, he was in his 50s uh, when he was assuming power. So this obsession with uh, uh, young people can't do this, young people can't do the other is actually wrong because uh, these people are people that made things happen. If we say that between 1964 and 1994 things happened, they happened because the ones that were driving uh, the organizations were youthful people. Uh, the late uh, President Dr. Banda, uh, later on in his life, uh, uh, he realized that uh, he, you know, he probably had to step down. This is why, uh, unprecedented, he honorably accepted uh, both the 1993 referendum results as well as the 1994 uh, general elections results, uh, passing on the mantle to. Uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Bakim Ruzi. So, history uh, should uh, repeat itself. Let's uh, get uh, the youthful uh, people that want to aspire for leadership positions by all means, please go ahead. Uh, the history of this country is something we can refer to. Uh, there were uh, a lot of young people in 1994 that uh, were uh, activists as well as people that uh, you know, formed uh, Dr. Bakim Ruzi's uh, first cabinet. It's there for people to see. I don't have to, to narrate it. It's uh, in the history books. So, uh, young people, uh, productive, uh, progressive, uh, visionary, go for it. I mean, there, there's nothing that should stop us. I think uh, that's the future of this country. Let's not uh, let uh, uh, others uh, shape the future of this country. We can do it ourselves. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President, you. for your time. Thank you very much for uh, giving us an opportunity to have this special conversation.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's how we wind up our special conversation with the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Dr. Saulos Klaus Chirima. We have discussed a number of things and we've also bagged a number of things. My name is Gospo Kazako. Thank you very much for being a good listener, a good viewer. Bye-bye.